Hi there. I found these round, these cylindrical cardboard containers with lids in a nested kit of three. This is the middle sized one. And I thought I would like to make a pencil cup. And so the first thing I want to do, uh, I think I'm going to decorate it in um, bronze and black. And so I'm going to base paint, put a base coat of black over the whole thing inside and out. And uh, I just use a, a, a lid from a, from a big drink <laughs> and uh, squirt a little bit of paint in there. This is a trick I learned from another YouTuber. Squirt a little bit of paint in there and then just paint the whole thing. We'll start down here. My plan is to make polymer clay tiles to decorate the exterior with, and you'll have a little space between the tiles. Since this is on the side of a cylindrical container, it would not be practical to try to resin it although I will be able to resin the individual pieces before I attach them to this cardboard cylinder. It's January and the heater has kicked on. It may be louder than I think. If you're doing this, don't forget to paint this top rim because it will most likely be exposed when you're finished. We're gonna paint the entire inside outside and bottom. Here we are finishing up painting the bottom. This covers, this uh, this paint covers this cardboard material pretty well, so one coat is all we're going to need as long as we haven't missed any spots. This plastic is some um, deli plastic. It's extremely handy for the craft table. I use it for polymer clay crafting and, as you can see, protecting my work surface. It's very handy. I'll put a link in the description. Leaves. Yes, leaves. So let's get the mica powders out. We'll want it to be fairly coherent throughout the project. And so what I'm really going to do, I'm going to roll this back up and dust this texture plate with the Aztec Gold Mica Powder. I have an exclusive brush for that. And it just dusts down in there. And the first imprint that I get, it'll be probably on the ribs also, but certainly on the leaves. So we'll just dust that baby right up. You should consider when using loose mica powder in this manner to wear a mask of some sort because this can get in your nose. You do not want it in your lungs. Some of these texture molds I leave mica up all the time and some of them I wash out and clean up for different effects later on. Just pop the lid back on this baby so it doesn't get spilled or sneezed in. That would be awkward. And as I said, I'm going to roll this back up and roll it out again. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and leave this green effect on here and go ahead and imprint this. Same way I did before. got this roller from Polymer Clay Superstore. That is a great place to order your products from. Um, sign up for the email list and you can get discount codes on a pretty regular basis. 
and they have lots of tools and supplies and of course polymer clay. I have other polymer clay products from there that I'm going to make tutorials about. Okay. Well, that works for me. Okay. Keep your wipes handy to wipe your fingertips. And now I'll take my blade, smooth off this end. Here. Yippee. And put this marked end right here. There. I'm going to set this aside. Actually, I'm going to. Where is my square cutter? Right here. I have another ongoing project that I use square tiles for. So we'll make, we'll cut a square tile or two here. And that's not quite big enough to get the other end. So we'll put this up here with these beautiful scraps. Here's a tile that has already been wiped down. I'll move this little square tile over here. Helps if you grab the dull side of the blade there and this is going to go around a round vessel so these tiles need to be not too wide I'm going to make them about 3 8 to a half inch wide and I'm going to eyeball this with here's another beautiful scrap And I will cut my tiles. I'm going to get this stiffer blade here. It's got a little curve to it that we don't need right here. All right. Just eyeballing quarter, three eighths, half inch. And these can go right on the baking tile. And it doesn't matter when they go on your finished project what order they're in. Because, like, you're not really going after a continuous design, you're going after an interesting design. Not that the continuous design isn't interesting but it's not a requirement. Now, I'm seeing that I'm getting a little bend in my cuts, so what we'll do is square them up. Just kind of put these together-ish on the tile. We're going to fill up a tile or two of these, and then we'll bake them. We'll try to make all we need in this first run so that we can start gluing them to the pencil cup. So we're going to do a little bit more of this and I'll show them to you right before they go in the oven. Just finishing up the last few squares from the extra. And this will be some beautiful scrap for something else. I will put these with the other squares. And here are my tiles that I hope have enough of these tiles to go all the way around our cardboard cylinder. When I was a little girl, I wondered how in the world waitresses carried all those plates. And then I waited tables for a while and learned that it's just a matter of balancing them. 
have to be careful that you don't drop any. <laughs> I'll carry this one in my other hand. Alrighty, our tiles are all out of the oven now. This is Primo clay that I've been working with. So it bakes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. I put mine in a cold oven, turn the oven on to that temperature, and set a timer for 30 minutes. And uh, that works for me with these thin pieces. A little bit, little bit flexible, but uh, not a huge issue. Now we're going to glaze them, and um, a couple ways that that can be done is with a two-part epoxy resin, and another way is with something like Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. Uh, the epoxy resin needs to be left to cure a minimum of 12 hours. The Dimensional Magic is dry to the touch pretty quickly, and then um, you can move it about sooner. Um, for <clears throat> something that I want to be durable and long-lasting, I will prefer to use the uh, resin. First, I'm going to set these long tiles out on my resin mats, and if there's room, then we'll do these squares. So I'll set the squares aside and loosen the long tiles. It'll make a pretty decorative item, won't it? Okay, here we go, milliliters. So, 20 milliliters of resin and 10 milliliters of hardener. And I'll turn this lamp on over here so I can see the markings through the cup. It alters the quality of light though. Here we go. I'm gonna let that air bubble get up into the resin and the resin down into the tip. And then we can squeeze. Let the air back in and cap that baby off. And now the hardener. I like this resin because it mixes nice and clear and lets go of the air bubbles very nicely. The part B is much thinner than the part A, so you want to be slow and careful <laughs> releasing it because it'll, it'll release a lot before you know it. You want to be sure and get enough hardener or your resin will not cure. I don't know what would happen if you got too much. And for this container, I'm going to use one of these little plastic spatulas to stir. And uh, because it's got nice straight sides and a square shape on it, set a timer for two minutes. Turn this lamp off. All right, here we go. And then we just stir and stir and stir gently. We're beginning to lose our light for the day. I'm in a room with lots of windows, so we get some nice natural lighting here. I 
may have to go ahead and turn this lamp back on. Be sure and scrape the sides of your cup and scrape your stir stick and scrape the sides of your cup and stir several times. Make sure you get the bottom of your cup scraped off, scrape the sides, scrape your stir because you want it all to be combined very well. Scraping the sides, scraping the stir. If you've just done a, a wishy-washy stir in the center of the material, and then when you go to pour your resin out, you scrape the sides, then you get material that hasn't been combined properly, and that doesn't cure very well. All right, there's our two minutes. So we'll stop the timer. Scrape our stir again. And then wipe it down. Wipe it down. And it's nice and clean. And I can put it away to use again. I recently acquired some of these little droppers, so I'm going to try those today for the first time in this kind of project. Squeeze the bulb and draw some material up, uh, maybe less air, and I'll just, I'll just draw it on. This material hardens by a chemical reaction between the resin and the hardener has nothing to do with air. So while it's liquid in its uncured state and we call it wet, it, technically it doesn't actually dry per se. It cures to a hardened state. When we get done applying the resin, and I'll use the torch to pop any bubbles that I didn't pick out or didn't pop by themselves. We'll leave it to cure for a minimum of 12 hours and come back and check on it in the morning. And even at 12 hours, it's still a little tender. Uh, and by what I mean by that is that if you put something textured on it, it will it will try to hold that texture. Alrighty, we got the rest of the long tiles resined. I think this is enough. Hope, hope so. We'll find out in a minute. Get these off the resining device. There. And then these are for a, a different project that I'm working on, so I'm going to put them in this other container in a rather noisy fashion. There. And I had put a piece of tape around here to temporarily stick these on to make sure that we were going to have enough and see how they would fit. Do that again real quickly. And if you've got any that have a little bit of overflow, you can usually shave that off with your X-Acto knife if you get it before it hardens very seriously. There we go. Yep, just about like that. Okay. Oh, this is perfect. With two to spare. So we've got good coverage, and now I'm going to glue them on. And I'm going to use this Ultimate Non-Toxic Water-Based Super Glue. It is very thick and very sticky. Crafter's Pick, it's called. And I store it upside down, but it's so thick that it almost never comes all the way down to the, to the bottom. I'll use some of these funny flat toothpicks that I found at Hobby Lobby. And see, I can pick that glue out of there now. I'm going to 
pull this off of here because it's got that piece of tape in the middle that'll show when we're done that I don't particularly wish to have happen. And I like to put the glue right on the tile. Give it a good coverage. And uh, not too much, although it does dry clear. So if a little bit of it scooches out from in between, it's no big deal. Press it on there. Make sure that it doesn't stick far down below the bottom. And I'll put one here and one here kind of for a stopper so that my vessel will stay right there. I'll show you a couple of these in real time and then we'll switch to fast forward. How about that? And we'll get glue on our fingers. <laughs> Not the end of the world, though. This is nice, easy glue. And I've got my handy-dandy wipes right behind me there. So I'll reach over there and wipe my fingers off. They're a little bit wiggly. Alrighty, so we're going to switch to fast forward now, and I'll be back when that's done. So here's what it looks like with still wet glue and it turns out the two extra turned into one extra and the one extra broke so that actually turned out perfectly. We'll let this dry and uh, then I'll decide whether to put something on the bottom or not but this is close enough to done for me. and. Uh, I have it in mind as a gift of a pencil cup for someone. So, there you go.